and we'll get started. So I want to welcome everyone uh, to our September state call. Um, our next one, just for your, your information, mark your calendar, will be uh, the fourth Wednesday in October. We always try to do these on the uh, fourth Wednesday. So that will be October 25th. Uh, at 8 p.m. and that'll be just a few days prior to our um, state gathering, which is on the uh, uh, on the uh, on the 28th. So um, please mark your calendars. Also tonight, uh, you should uh, see my face uh, on the uh, during the presentation this evening. Uh, I was. It was pointed out to me that uh, when making a presentation, the uh, speaker should be uh, seen all the time. So, uh, okay, so I'm going to uh, uh, let you see me uh, talk. Hopefully that'll make things uh, uh, a little better for the uh, presentation. All right, let's get started. Uh, I sent out uh, an agenda to everyone, but uh, just to quickly go over it again tonight, uh, our agenda will be, we're going to do a little real quick review of our vision statement and our mission statement. Uh, that will probably, I think, become a uh, permanent uh, part of our uh, state call. Then we're going to uh, introduce some new leaders that we've uh, come, that have come on board during the month of September. Uh, we'll do a little organizational update. Going to talk a bit about the co-leader program that we implemented and uh, talk a little bit about MailChimp, a program that, we're, uh, that we have implemented for region captains and district captains. And then we'll, uh, we're going to get into, uh, this is going to also become, I think, a permanent part of our state call, and that is we're going to, get some team reports from uh, various uh, teams that we have that are working uh, uh, working on behalf of the Convention of States. So uh, we'll be doing some team reports tonight. And then finally, we'll go over the tracking report to see uh, how our progress has been uh, with regard to accomplishing our mission. So anybody have any questions about that? our agenda tonight. Okay. Um, okay, let's uh, proceed on then. Our vision statement. I, I do want to say one more thing again. Uh, if you're not talking, please mute yourself so that we don't hear what you're doing. And we just, I'm hearing someone typing right now. So please mute yourself. See if I can, uh, so that we don't hear what you're doing, or don't hear any animals in the background or whatever. Okay, our vision statement is: our vision is to build a Hoosier grassroots community of citizens and legislators dedicated to the constitutional concept of self-governance. And this is the vision statement that we introduced in uh, recent state calls. And like I said, I think we're going to we're going to touch on this every every state call, and we need to keep uh, keep hammering this on that uh, this is what our vision is in the state of Indiana now. Our mission statement. These are the things that we want to accomplish by June 30th of next year. If we accomplish the mission as stated here, then uh, we will be taking steps toward accomplishing and realizing our vision. So our mission statement then uh, says that we're going to, number one, we're going to fill all the executive positions, all the region captains, and 70% of our district captain positions. 
We have 100 districts in the state of Indiana, so we want to get, by June 30th, we want to have 70 district captains in place. All of our region captains, that would be nine region captains, and then, of course, all of our executive positions. Number two, we want to strengthen our legislator relationships by conducting at least two quarterly legislator meetings in each district between now and June 30th. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about this because this is one of the teams that will be reporting, our legislative liaison team. Grassroots growth to 50,000 supporters. We are currently right in the neighborhood of about 20,000. Um, so we have a long way to go to get to 50,000 by June 30th of next year. But that's, that's our mission. And then uh, finally, an ongoing educational meeting scheduled in each region. That can be a town hall meeting. It can be any meeting of any type, but we want at least one ongoing meeting where we have like-minded people, convention of states people, people that support our our uh, our program, and at least one meeting ongoing Rachel Kessler? meeting. Hello, who Sorry. is that? It's Rachel Kessler. Sorry, I'm late. Hi, Rachel. Thank you. Hi. Uh, ongoing educational meeting in uh, each region. Okay, so that's our mission statement. Anybody have any questions or comments on that? All right. Well, uh, we're going to mention this again. Our state leadership gathering uh, that is scheduled for October 28th. And uh, that is going to be at, in Carmel at the St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Catholic Church, time 12 to 2 p.m. Now, uh, David has been sending out evites to everyone. David, are you on now? Yes, Dale. I had to phone in. I'm, at, I'm not able to pick up the audio through free conference call. All right, sorry about that. Seems to always be a problem one way every time. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, you go ahead. You got, you wanted to make some comments on this now, with the, especially the evites? Yes, uh, the invitations. I've got 33 people that have said yes. Uh, four people have said no. Two maybes. And we have 57 not replied. Um, of the 57, about 40 people haven't even viewed the email yet. They haven't even opened it. Wow. So, uh, but the uh, the 33, um, some people are bringing their spouse or their friend or whatever, so uh, that translates into about 20, 25 um, Convention of State uh, members, and then the some of those members are going to bring their spouse or their friend, and that totals the 33. All right. The, uh, this, the, email, the email is set to, to resend again uh, three weeks out, and then it'll send a third time one week out. And uh, that's about all i got to say on that. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's a bit disappointing uh, that uh, there are so many that haven't even been looked at yet um, so but we got time we'll work on that and we'll try to uh, get that improved once again this is an opportunity this is very much a meet and greet opportunity this is a time for people to put faces to names names to faces so uh, uh, like I said we're going to have a, a, a sandwich lunch this will be very informal and uh, a time to, to meet each other. One of our featured speakers will be Senator uh, Travis Holdman, a uh, sponsor of the uh, uh, resolution that was passed in 2016. And uh, he is dead set on being at this uh, gathering 
So I know he's looking forward to being there and, and meeting all of you. So please, uh, if you haven't uh, looked at your, uh, your invitation, please do so, and please, please, uh, RSVP. We need to know how many people are going to be coming so that we can plan the food needs. So uh, please, please get back to us. All right, um, let's talk about uh, new leaders that have come on board in um, in September. And uh, first of all, I want to introduce to you the new district captain in District 94, and that is Dan Robin. Dan, are you on? Can you un unmute yourself, Dan, and uh, speak to us? Or is he trying to do that, I wonder, huh? I don't know which number he is here. Dan, are you there? Okay, maybe he'll come on. Uh, let's move on then to Joyce Foreman and the new district captain in uh, District 42. Joyce, are you on this evening? Joyce, are you on? Well, well, well. Boy, we're having trouble uh, getting people on here. I don't know if I don't have their numbers here. I don't know which number they are. Hey, Dale. Yes. Yeah, this is David at... I see some chat messages here. It looks like a few other people are reporting audio problems as well. Really? So, yeah, so it looks like a number of people are, are phoning in um, in addition to viewing it on the website. Huh. Hey, Dale, Tim Heidenreich here. Yeah, Tim. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm, I'm traveling, but I'm calling in. Oh, thank you. Dan Robin lost his signal. I'm back. All right, Dan. <laughs> All right, Dan, you're the new district captain in uh, District 94. And, that is uh, correct. So, uh, Dan, uh, um, you want to tell us just a little bit about yourself? A few comments, if you would like. Sure. Um, I have a uh, sales and marketing background with customer service. Currently, I entertain in nursing homes, uh, give guitar lessons to uh, Lutheran Child Family Services, work as a bellman uh, to make a couple extra bucks right by the Capitol building down here in Indianapolis, and I'm real excited about being a patriot. I want to get involved with uh, working with you side by side. Great. Good deal, Dan. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you very much. All right, do uh, Joyce, are you on yet? All right, apparently we're having uh, some uh, audio problems. Uh, so uh, um, if, you, if you're having a problem, you may need to uh, call in on your phone in order to, uh, to hear what we're talking about here. Okay. Uh, Joyce, uh, as I mentioned, Joyce Foreman is the new district captain in District 42, and she has uh, already lined up a, uh, a co-leader uh, by the name of Charlie Jones. So we're in the process of getting him processed uh, as a co-leader, and we're going to talk about the co-leader uh, program a little bit more in just a minute here. Marshall Greenbank. District Captain now in District 27. Marshall, are you on? Yeah, I'm here. All right, Marshall. Good deal. Uh, Marshall, tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and uh, how you got involved with uh, Convention of States. Um, I basically found you guys on uh, Facebook. I just was running across from you guys, and I was, did some little research, brief research on you guys. And I was like, yeah, I would really enjoy to get – my main thing is to help maybe towards getting the term 
limited terms, uh, get some new faces and get some new faces in there. Um, but uh, I currently, job-wise, I work uh, in security at Ivy Tech Community College here in Lafayette, Indiana, where I currently live. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I might mention, uh, if you don't mind me mentioning Marshall, uh, Marshall's a young guy, uh, 29 years old, right? Yes. <laughs> so uh, good to have uh, uh, the younger guy, younger people coming into our movement. So welcome, Marshall, and thank you for taking on the leadership role in uh, District 27. Thanks. I'll uh, try my best. All righty. Okay, let's move on then. I want to give you a little uh, uh, update on our uh, state as far as our regions and districts. Uh, here you can see, uh, you've seen this report before. Um, we have the nine, the nine regions and then the districts per each region. The districts highlighted in red are the districts that we have, where we have a district captain in place. We are now up to 41 districts. So we are slowly creeping up. Uh, as I said, we need to, uh, our mission statement calls for 70%. That's 70 district captains that we need to have in place by um, June 30th of, last, of next year. So we have 41 in place, and uh, that means we have uh, 59 districts that are uh, that are open. All right. Any question? Anybody have any questions on that? Okay. Okay. Let's move on. I want I want to touch on this uh, co-leader program um, that we've uh, we've implemented. We want to have. Every district captain and every region captain, we want them to have appointed a co-leader uh, by the end of this year. Now, I want to explain here that when we say co-leader, uh, we're talking about uh, an assistant, someone that can help the existing district captain and existing region captain. Uh, we're not talking about taking a district and appointing a co-leader and dividing that district now into two different districts. We're talking about a co-leader being an assistant or a help to the district captain and, and, and region captain. So um, we want all the co-leaders to go through the district captain application process uh, because we want we want to have dedicated individuals that are stepping up as co-leaders. Just for your information, uh, uh, up prior to September, we had six districts that had co-leaders in place, and then uh, looks like we're picking up our seventh one with uh, Joyce in um, in District 42. Uh, that's that's still in process uh, during the month of September here, but this would be the seventh one. So uh, keep at this. We want, like I said, by the end of this year, we want to have co-leaders in place in all the districts and region captain positions. Anyone have any questions? Dale, this is Dan Robb, and I'm, I got the audio part of this. Is, is there also a PowerPoint presentation I should be looking at in my cell phone? Not on your cell phone, on your computer. I'll, I'll listen for now. That's okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Okay. We are implementing effective uh, uh, October 1, the MailChimp program. Now, those of you that have been around for a while, you remember that in uh, Nation Builder, we had the ability to do what we call blast emails, where we could send emails out to uh, everyone in a particular district. Well, that ability went away 
last year. Can't remember exactly when. So what has taken its place is the MailChimp service, the MailChimp program. And it's been expanded so that now uh, state directors and region captains have access to MailChimp. And the way we want to do this now is that all district captains, if you want to send a blast email out to um, the followers in your district or perhaps just to the volunteers in your district, you compose the email and you send that to your region captain. And the region captain then will work with you and will get that uh, disseminated to the proper people that you want in, in your district. Um, so the district captains send your uh, email compositions to your region captain. If you're a district captain in a region without a region captain, then you send it to David or I. As state directors, we have access to do this too. Um, we're all kind of learning this, so uh, bear with us. But uh, it is, uh, uh, we do have quite a, a range of, uh, of uh, features that we can use in this program. Uh, so, um, uh, again, this, this, is, this is very important because this is, this is the way, one of the major ways of communicating to, um, to individuals, to followers, supporters uh, in, in our state, in our districts, in our region. So anyone have any questions on this? And uh, just to uh, remind the region captains, uh, there is a training video on the leader site, the uh, MailChimp, uh, MailChimp training video uh, is on there, as well as um, some information from the help desk on how to send out emails to specific, uh, specific groups. All right. Want to get into now some um, of the team reports, and our first team that I want to uh, bring up is our SIA team. That's uh, Jerry Rowe and Tim Heidenreich. And uh, Jerry, uh, you wanted to make a few comments on COS University and the Wiki feature. Uh, yeah, uh, you hear me all right? I can hear you, hello, yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, COS University, of course, we started that out uh, probably about a year ago, I think, and um, with courses for district captains and uh, legislative liaisons and that sort of thing. But we've had a little trouble with the software, and there were some other features that we wanted to get in there, so we're moving to a version 2.0, let's call it, of COS University, which will be based upon a uh, WordPress software. And uh, it's be a lot easier to use. Um, we can do some things with it that weren't easy to do before. And we're planning on that when you log in to coslogin.com, that's how you get the COS University now, that when that moves to Citizen Builder, we'll come out with this 2.0 version. And when you uh, log on and take your courses and everything, the data from that, that is that you took the course and passed it and everything, will pass on to C uh, Citizen Builder. And uh, we'll be able to see that you took the course and, you know, you passed the flying college and all that. And uh, hopefully even automatically assign uh, the types of courses to the person who has a role. For instance, if it was a um, district captain, then those courses would be automatically populated on your system. And mm -hmm. then there's the wiki, which, uh, well, 
Yeah, it's, it should be pretty nice. <clears throat> and then there's the wiki. It's, uh, you go normally to uh, www.convincethestates.com. We'll just take the www out and put in wiki.convincethestates.com, and that's the COS wiki. And we're doing some enhancements, or well, that's me, I guess, doing some enhancements to that and considering putting uh, a behind-the-scenes file storage on it for uh, things that are pertaining to uh, internal things pertaining to each state, you know, and grassroots coordinators and that kind of thing. I need to find out how much of that is going to be done anyway with Citizen Builder and how it's going to be done and some details like that. But now, now, there's Jerry, a lot this, going on in, this, in this wiki. Jerry, this wiki page that you maintain here, this is a national wiki page, right? It is. It is. And it, uh, In fact, it's not only national for convention states, it's open to the public. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, anybody. John Birch Society can get on there and read our articles. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> when I right. hope they do, because maybe they'll figure something out. <laughs> Okay, all right, great. Well, that's uh, that's uh, uh, that takes a lot of time, doesn't it, to maintain that, Jerry? Isn't that a pretty big job? Uh, maintenance isn't that bad. Putting in new articles is what takes the time. Right. Uh, you know, there's several of them. There's uh, four or five of them there in the neighborhood of a hundred pages long, with oh, footnotes goodness. and and everything. Yeah. My goodness. Okay. If you go right. there to the main page right now, what's the newest ones are in the orange balloon at the top, and uh, the average on those is probably 95 pages, or close to 100. And probably, I know, uh, two or three of them have uh, about 400 footnotes in the document. Oh, my goodness. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, Jerry. Tim, are you on? Yeah, I'm I'm here, Dale. <laughs> Tim, I uh, uh, you're on your phone. Yeah, I'm driving down the highway on my phone now, trying to get back to Indianapolis. The only thing that I want to talk about was that <laughs> news. The recording has started. What was that all about? Somebody needs to mute. They're uh, they're using their computer, microphone, and a phone probably at the same time. Okay. All right, Tim, go ahead. I'm sorry. You still there, Tim? Yeah, hello. Yeah, Tim. Tim, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you, but you can't hear me. Yes, I can hear you. All right, we're going to move on. Thank you, Tim. You uh, drive safe. Um, what I'm showing here is uh, the latest update from uh, Jason Gerard on Citizen Builder. Um, he, uh, he puts those out on Slack uh, as well as email. But uh, 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 you need to uh, be watching those whenever they come out, kind of keep you up to date on what's happening with Citizen Builder. Okay, let's move on to the legislative liaison team. Uh, Paul, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> well, you're about the only one, it appears. <laughs> Uh, Rachel, you're still on, aren't you? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, good. Um, everyone, we've uh, we've challenged our um, legislative liaison team. That's Paul Phillips, Rachel Kessler, and Jack Durth uh, to come up with a uh, a, a plan of. Um, well, I'll tell you what, Paul. Why don't I just let you talk about that rather than uh, me me uh, uh, saying everything? So. Paul, you go ahead and take it away. All right. Uh, yes, I can confirm that Dale has challenged us to come up with a plan. 
um, uh, Rachel and Jack and I have, have reached out. We're trying to get a, a time schedule where we can start to work on that. Don't have anything scheduled yet, but uh, loosely what's, what's going on at this point is I've been covering um, the representing Indiana on the legislative liaison weekly uh, conference calls, webinars. And um, as far as that goes, we're uh, nationally trying to get organized to where we can uh, provide help for one another. Uh, quite honestly, the, the issue we're struggling with right now is there are 12 of us that have passed the resolution and all the rest that have not. And so the activities are very different whether you're a past state or not. And we're just trying to sort that through if, if we need to all meet together or maybe even just split off and, um, you know, past states to meet and then the non-pass to meet. Um, but uh, we're getting that all worked through. Um, as far as uh, legislator meetings, um, for any district captains that are here, I want to uh, give an invitation to you that if uh, you're scheduling a meeting with any of your legislators and you'd like to have uh, Rachel or myself or Jack join you, um, shoot me an email and we'll see if we can arrange that. Uh, we certainly don't want to slow you down or uh, have, you, have you have to have one of us along, but we're definitely uh, available to come along to a meeting with a legislator. Um, personally, I've got, um, thanks to George Ward, I was able to meet uh, Susan Glick, a uh, senator up in LaGrange, who, who actually opposed us, but I got a commitment from her uh, to meet with me next month. We don't have that on the schedule yet, but I look forward to talking with her. And um, I've also got uh, another call in to my legislator, Ben Smaltz, who actually attended the simulation. I'm hoping to get a meeting with him uh, in the near future as well. So for, for me personally, I'm just going to work through uh, scheduling legislator meetings um, with some, some keys legislators up in my area here in the Northeast. And um, in the meantime, um, Jack and Rachel and I will work on coming up with a formal plan. Okay, good, good. Now, <clears throat> we're also one of the side side features uh, of the uh, plan is, is to find out which legislators, especially newly elected legislators, what kind of educational needs are we uh, <clears throat> confronted with here? Uh, because some of these new legislators may have no idea what uh, what Article Five is all about. So uh, we, that's where our role is going to come into play: is educating them on Article Five and educating them as to what we're all about. So, okay, guys, thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for the? legislative team. Hey, Dale, this is Paul again. I will add for the district captains, this is a great time uh, to try to meet with your legislator um, since they are out of session and uh, you'll most likely find them in their home district and you can probably meet with them at a local coffee shop or something like that. Um, and I, I think we're, we're at an advantage now that um, we're a past state for a couple of reasons. One, a great time to lobby your legislators when you're not asking for anything. And, you know, we don't have the big ask now for the support of our resolution. Uh, so you can just concentrate on relationship, relationship building and um, it would probably do you a lot of good to ask the legislator what their priorities are, what things they're trying to work on uh, for the upcoming session. So it's not just all about us. Um, asking for their support. It's, it's more about uh, building relationship. And then the, the second thing we can be focusing on is uh, planning for the day that we do have 34 states. And then we'll need to engage the legislators again in the, the delegate selection process and so on. Uh, so those are some great topics to talk with them about uh, is starting to plan for uh, the convention instead of talking them into uh, supporting the resolution. 
And this can be especially helpful with those who did not support us. Um, you can approach them of, hey, I'm, I'm not here to get your support, but the reality is the resolution has passed here, and um, probably a good line to use is, just like you, I don't want to have a runaway convention, so let's start talking about uh, delegate selection and, and, and what the state's going to do once the convention is called. So those are some great topics you can use in meeting with your legislators. Good deal. All right, Paul. Anybody have any questions? Dale, this is Rachel. I just wanted to add a couple of things, if that's okay. Yep. Sure. Um, well, first of all, I wanted to second everything that Paul said, um, especially about the uh, meeting with the district captains. I think that would actually be great. Uh, I just I want to say that I just got the email. I think it was within a few days about about being on the weekly conference call. So I haven't done that yet, um, the national calls, but I will be doing that going forward. Um, okay. I'll be on those calls. And also, I just wanted to let everyone know that uh, Jack and I actually went down to the state house last week, and it was my first time down there. Uh, so it was nice to kind of get the lay of the land a little bit. We met with uh, Donna Shively um, from District 24, uh, who was amazing. She was so wonderful to give a little tour. Um, so I'm a little bit slow on the uptake with this because I'm, it's all new to me, and I don't know anybody um, in any of the legislators yet, so it's a little overwhelming, but uh, we're going. We're making progress, and I just wanted to update you and everyone on that. Great. Well, thank you very much, Rachel. I wasn't aware that uh, you and Jack had, uh, had gotten together. I knew you were, you were trying to, but uh, good. I'm glad to hear that. That's very good. Very good. Hey, Dale, this is Dan, this is Dan Robin. I have a question for you. Yeah, Dan. What type of field training would somebody like me or some of the other new district captains get? I have my ideas of what I want to do. I want to see what you guys are doing and what works to uh, take this pigtail off of that, dovetail off of that. Um, is there a calendar of when people go to the state house? Um, you know, especially in the Indianapolis area where I am. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, we can talk about that. We can talk about that, Dan, uh, uh, off the call, uh, but. Well, I, I, let, well, we'll talk about that off the call, okay? That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Also, Dale, I'm sorry. Um, you can. Uh, Dan wants to give me a call since I'm in north uh, north side of Indy. That's okay. fine too, as far as helping to set up meetings. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Well, let's move on then to. Our comms team, uh, David, are you back on? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Um, last month, I introduced to you uh, our our new uh, digital marketing coordinator. Uh, well, uh, she has resigned, so we are without a digital marketing coordinator. A permanent one so David Waters uh, is going to temporarily fill in as our digital marketing coordinator so David you want to fill us in on all that you've accomplished so far uh, well so far I've accomplished <laughs> uh, getting my name on that screen somehow uh, <laughs> that's about it that that's eagerly Eagerly awaiting the launch of Citizen Builder and uh, looking forward to uh, finding a permanent digital marketing coordinator. Okay. Yes, we will have to uh, uh, restart that recruitment program again. So, all right. Well, I, I want to thank David for uh, stepping up uh, to uh, take that on. This this is uh, this position is very critical. This team is very critical and going to be very critical to the uh, especially when the new uh, website comes online so um, we're having a little setback here but uh, we'll overcome it and uh, and we'll uh, we'll succeed with this it's just gonna uh, take a little more time than we uh, anticipated so again David thank you very much for stepping forward on that you're welcome. Okay, uh, coalitions. Uh, <clears throat> our coalitions uh, 
team, which is pretty much comprised of uh, uh, one individual, Peter Yangsma, the region captain in Region 1. Peter couldn't be with us tonight, but uh, uh, there's a new program. I just want to mention this to you. You'll, you should be hearing more about this. This is a new program coming out called Coalitions for COS. And basically, uh, what they're doing is they're uh, recruiting and gathering people that are willing to put their face in a put their picture out as representative of different coalitions that they belong to. For example, uh, physicians or veterans or truck drivers. So because these are all different coalitions and and many of these coalitions well they support convention of states so what we want to do is we want to get a picture of a physician out there that's willing to do it and uh, and and show his or her support for convention of states there'll be more information coming out on this but I just want to mention this if you know someone uh, let us know if you know someone that's a uh, a physician or maybe a, a, a significant individual in uh, 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 veterans organizations or, or any other coalitions, and then Peter will hopefully be able to provide us more information in the future on this. But uh, keep this keep this uh, program in mind, coalitions for COS. So anyone have any questions on that? I know we don't where we don't. I didn't cover that very thoroughly, but that's about all I know right now. Hey, Dale. Yeah. This is David. I just wanted to let you know I, I sat in on the coalition's director call the other night, and they Good. made one Good. one uh, big announcement. Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro. Yes. I don't know if anybody saw that uh, announcement. Um, that he's going to become uh, one of the headline faces on Convention of States website. One of the head, one of the headliners, as they refer to. Him. Good. Okay. All right. Well, that is now, live on uh, townhall.com. Pardon me? Huh? There is a link. Uh, you can go to townhall.com and see that announcement. Okay. All right. Okay, Jerry, you want to turn your camera off, please. We, sure. we see you. We see you on the couch. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> All right, moving on to our grassroots team, and we've got some exciting news there. George, are you on? And Hello. George, yeah, George, are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. <clears throat> You're loud and clear. Yeah, it's, it's kind of broken. I, I got a real crummy connection. I'm on, uh, well, I went swimming in the lake with my cell phone the other day, so it's dead right now. <laughs> and I'm uh, on phone here through uh, my Google, through Google Talk, or phone, or whatever they call it. I don't know. All right. But, um, so my connection is kind of, kind of if. I can even hear my echo, but uh, anyway, uh, I want to thank you guys for um, you know, having these webinars. Uh, I think they're pretty useful, and I I think that last few months uh, the attendance has been growing, and that's good, and I think it's going to continue to grow. And also want to give a big hello to everybody that's out there. Hello. Um, thank you for coming in tonight. Uh, I'm again. I'm, I'm George Ward, the grassroots coordinator here in Indiana. Uh, basically, my task is to recruit and train, and uh, to some degree, to help motivate new district captains. Uh, myself and uh, uh, Gary have been attending the uh, Americans for Prosperity uh, Grassroots Leadership Academy, and uh, Paul went to it last year and recommended that. So, hopefully, that training will help out in the uh, motivation part, just how to build a grassroots team. But uh, I also do work with the follow-up tool, sending out uh, thank you letters out to new signers and passing on uh, contact information 
uh, of their of the DC for their district if there is one assigned. Uh, recently, I've gotten some help in this from a new volunteer, Dale Hensley. Uh, we spent about two hours in the uh, Columbia City Library in training, and I believe she's going to be an excellent addition to the effort. It, it, is Dale online? I, I can't tell. I can't look at that stuff right now in the state I'm in, but it, is Dale online, Dale? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't see where she is. Dale, are you out there? Yeah, apparently not. So uh, if she's out there, she okay. can't get in. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, yeah, it's I don't know. Uh, wind is blowing more than ten miles an hour. And my connection connection <laughs> goes. Eh. So now, as far as uh, DC assignments, as far as DC assignments go, I think Dale went over this earlier. I I think so. I was trying to get in, and it was it's just. Now it's been a whole mess on my end. But anyway, uh, recruitment has been kind of a roller coaster the last couple months. Uh, we've lost two and gained three just in the last two months. And the, the three new ones are Walter Brown, uh, Brownsburg, District 28, Joyce Foreman in Montezuma, District 42, and Marshall Greenback in Lafayette, District 27. Right. Uh, they were assigned during August and September. In June and July, we picked up Danny Strong from Indianapolis, District 92, April Livingstone from Hamlet, District 20, Nolly Bland from Evansville in District 77. And uh, of these six, four of them are taking uh, assignments that were previously open districts. Uh, didn't have anybody assigned to them, and also we're happy to fill those. Uh, we're likely losing one of the previous district captains after his district is turned over to the new D.C. Um, we're still trying to fill assignments in Northwest and Southwest Indiana. We're kind of lean in those areas, uh, especially in the Northwest. A lot of the uh, liberalism, progressivism, whatever you want to call it, uh, a lot of it bleeds over there from Illinois. So we have kind of a it's kind of a struggle getting uh, anybody that's interested in taking the reins. There, we've had a couple come and go, but. Uh, and uh, we're, we're slowly working over in that area. Well, that, that's it for me right now. Is there anything else, Dale? No, that's it. George, you do a good job on the uh, uh, the follow-up tool. That's uh, for, for those of you that are not familiar with that tool, uh, uh, that's, that's where uh, people that sign our petition, that's their first uh, um, exposure to Convention of States, and that's when we uh, welcome them to Convention of States. And it's from that, from that uh, tool that we know who they are and, and uh, we can issue that uh, welcome. And uh, Dale Hensley will be a great help because uh, that, that you, can get, yeah, you, can get behind, you can get behind quickly on that tool. So uh, uh, George does a good job on that but needs help. So... That's why we're bringing Dale on. All right. Thank you very much, George. All right. Let's get on now to uh, <clears throat> the monthly tracking report. And I'm going to try and I'm going to use a little uh, a laser pointer uh, today. That, that makes it a little better, doesn't it? Now, <laughs> this tracking report, if you remember our mission statement, where our mission statement includes petition growth, uh, legislator meetings, educational meetings, and then the placement of, of people in, in positions. So that's what we're tracking here. And in the month of September, you can see uh, by region the petition growth in each region, and it's it's uh, the numbers are much better this month as opposed to August. We're starting August 1st. We're looking at a period of August 1st through June 30th of next year. So the petition growth um, was much better in September. Legislator meetings, uh, we, I, did, I was not aware of any meetings that took place uh, during the month of September. So if you meet with a legislator, you need to let me know so I can 
uh, mark you on this report. Educational meetings, as far as I know, uh, the two meetings, the one in Region 3 and the one in Bob Hall's region, Region 9, those are the only two educational meetings we have going on. Position placement in the month of September, these are primarily, uh, these positions were new uh, district captains that came on board. So for the month, uh, I, I do want to recognize a couple districts. District 38 had 25 petition signers. Um, there's no district captain in that in that district. That's uh, That district's in... Uh, in Josh Plew's uh, region, I think that's Region 4. Also, District 58 in, um, had 23 petitions signed. And that district captain is Stuart Romali. And he's in uh, Bob Hall's region, Region 9. The leading region for the month as far as petition growth was, in fact, Region 4 with 190 Josh Plu. Now, I, th those are, 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 are good progress. That's good progress, folks. But you can see when you look over here at our goals over on this side, if you do the math, we got to generate many, many more than uh, what we're generating here. We're, we're doing better, and I want to I want to be positive on this. We are doing better but we got to get even better, okay? So these are the September numbers. Then September year-to-date, which would be uh, August and September combined. Uh, here are our numbers for uh, by region and petition growth. So uh, in the two-month period, we've added a little over 1,300 petition signers. Um, this is what we need to to generate to get to our 50,000 uh, and then the legislative meetings educational meetings and position placements um, year-to-date anybody have any questions on this because uh, uh, it's important that we track our progress and we need to know where we stand so we'll try our best to, to stay on top of this report uh, every month. Okay, I'm going to turn this pointer off, hopefully, or maybe not. There it goes. Okay. Um, i to turn that off. Okay. There we go. I always like to end uh, the presentation uh, or the uh, call with a quote. And uh, this month I was uh, looking at some uh, James Madison quotes, and a couple of little short ones caught my attention. Might be the times that we're in, but I thought this was—I uh, thought these were really, really uh, truthful. Wherever there is interest and power to do wrong, wrong will generally be done. And isn't that the truth? Um, where there's interest and power to do wrong, wrong will generally be done. And the truth is all men having power ought to be mistrusted. And I, I think that's very good, too. All men having power ought to be mistrusted. So I love uh, James Madison quotes. So anybody have any, uh, any closing uh, comments or questions? Hey, right. Dale, this is, this is George, George again. again. Yeah. Uh, since my uh, phone took a dive in the lake, uh, you and I wanted to talk after the meeting here, so can you slack me your phone number? Because you're in my contact <laughs> list and speed dial, but uh, I don't have a written up anywhere. I've got to make some changes in my lifestyle, I think. So, yeah, you need to stay out of the lake, George. It's the first time this year I've been to the lake. Can you give me a break? <laughs> okay, we'll do. We'll do. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good night, folks. Good night Bye. everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Dale.